It's James here from GoodGuitarist.com. And today, I wanna to talk about picks. I wanna talk about being picky about our picks. What kind of pick should you use? We're gonna talk about three different variables, the thickness of the pick, the size and shape of it, and the material of the pick. And hopefully, this will help you make a better decision as to what pick will suit your needs. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the thickness of the pick. When you're holding a pick, you can grip it really tight or you could grip it really loose. When you're first getting started, it's hard to have a loose grip because you know, you're worried you might drop it and you might actually drop it You know, because you're just not used to it. So it's just a bit harder to hold and people tend to, when they're getting started, squeeze their pick really hard to make sure that it stays put. Now, the thing is, there's a direct correlation between how hard you squeeze the pick and how loud your guitar is. If you squeeze the pick really hard, you get a lot of volume. And if you loosen your grip, you know, here I'm just barely holding it. See how it gets really quiet? Nothing else has changed. I'm not moving my arm any faster or any harder. I'm just gripping my pick harder. All I'm doing is squeezing more with my hand. And you get more volume, right? Well, relating that to the thickness of your pick, a thin pick is going to give. You know, it's bendable. So no matter how hard you grip it, it's still going to give and keep your volume at a manageable level. Whereas with a thick pick, Thick picks require loose grip. So if you grip it too hard, it's just insanely loud and clangy. You have to let it glide along the strings. And that requires a loose grip. See how loose my grip is? And that's why we always recommend that beginners use thinner picks. Now the place where thicker picks excel is in single note plucking. You get a way bigger range of volume when you're using a thick pick. You can get a lot louder and you have way more control when you're playing quieter. Whereas with a thin pick, it kind of caps out at a certain point uh, with volume, right? And with control, because the pick is moving all the time and if you want to do some fast picking, your pick's flopping all over the place, your strings are flopping all over the place. It's really hard to be super precise and that's why you'd want to eventually, once you can develop that loose grip, it's really nice to go to a bit of a thicker pick. Now, what are the actual sizes when I'm saying thin, when I'm saying thick? A thinner pick is anything under, I'd say, 0.6 millimeters. And a thicker, like a medium pick would be 0.6 to 0.9. And then anything above 0.9 or one millimeter is gonna be a thicker pick. It kind of depends. Some brands call mediums heavies and heavies mediums and all this stuff, you know, it depends on, on what brand you're doing. That's why I just go by the actual thickness of it. I myself, go between 0.7 and one millimeter. So that's, I guess, in the medium range. And sometimes when I'm recording a lot of acoustic stuff, I will use an ultra thin pick because you get a really cool sound with it. When I was first getting started though, I used these two millimeter thick, tiny little picks that are awesome for plucking single note stuff, for playing like metal and shredding and all the stuff I was into when I was 17 years old. And that actually brings us to our next point, which is the overall size and shape of your pick. So hopefully you can see this. I have a bunch of different kinds of picks and yeah, there's huge like triangle ones. There's little tiny ones. There's all sorts of, there's all sorts of picks. When it comes to the size and shape of a pick, it's mostly preference. I do find that a larger pick gives you, it has more surface area. So when it's touching your skin, it's making more contact. You get more friction. So it's less likely to like rotate and get away on you. Whereas with a really tiny pick, they have a tendency to kind of rotate and twist and turn a lot, a lot more. But for the most part, it's, there's not too much to say about the size and shape. I think with this, it's mostly about experimentation. I think the standard pick is standard for a reason. Tiny picks are harder to strum with, especially because when you're using a tiny pick, your first finger might touch the strings as well. So you wanna, this is a lot to do with technique as well. You kinda wanna bend your finger in so that it doesn't stick out. And I find that's easier to do with a medium pick because you can kinda grab it along that edge. That's where I'm getting the most of my grip is right there. Whereas with a smaller pick, their finger will stick out like as much as the pick does. And their finger ends up rubbing the strings too. Once again, I think the pick size is the most subjective thing. Like thickness, there's some kind of science behind it, but for the size of it, it's kind of up to you. I would recommend 
buying a few different picks, you know, a few different thicknesses, a few different sizes and shapes, just so you can see what fits in your hand the best, what feels the best, you know, making sure your finger's not sticking out from underneath it, making sure that it's not rotating on you, that you have a nice steady grip without gripping too hard. And finally, the last thing that is gonna affect your choice is the material of your pick. There are a whole bunch of materials. There's a bunch of different plastics like nylon, celluloid, Delrin, you know, and um, the only reason I know about these things is because I've learned to play guitar and I've had to like go through every single pick material to see what I like the best. As far as how the material affects the pick, I think it affects it in three ways. There's the durability of it, the tone, and the feeling of it in your hand. Now, for durability, uh, picks do go bad. Like you can see here, I have, I have a pick where, I don't know if, if you can see it, but like the edge here has been worn down. It's been worn down on both of those and the tip has rounded off a lot. So the pick has changed how it rubs against the strings, which changes how it feels to me. And this pick feels too old for me. So I just put it in a pile and I give them out to students for free or whatever. I want to use a nice newer pick where the edges are intact. You know, and that's just my preference. Some people like super old picks. And since I like having fresh picks, I use ones made out of Delrin because it's a lot more durable than celluloid. And I find the powdery feeling of the Delrin pick, I maintain my grip way more. Whereas a smoother pick, like one made out of celluloid, uh, kind of slips out of my fingers. You know, but for the feeling, it's ultimately about how it feels to you. So once again, you know, just get a variety and try a whole bunch. Uh, finally, the tone. For the tone, it's really simple. The denser the material, the brighter the tone is gonna be, but it's super dependent on your guitar. If you have like a really dark sounding, soft sounding guitar, you know, I don't think that the pick is gonna make a huge difference. It's not gonna make it all of a sudden sound like a super bright guitar. It'll make it sound brighter, but it'll still be a dark sound because your guitar is dark sounding. With that in mind, it does make a difference, especially when you get ultra dense, like metal. You know, if you use a metal pick, it'll sound super bright. Now. Metal picks will shred your strings. If you use a metal pick, your strings are gonna break where you're picking them because just, you know, the Mohs hardness scale, that's just how physics works, right? When something of equal density rubs something of equal density, they'll both get scratched. And you're, you know, metal picks will shred your strings. Wooden picks, on the other hand, are like the opposite. They're super soft, super warm sounding, but they cost like a way too much. You know, each pick is like three to five dollars. I buy my picks for 50 cents a piece and I lose quite a lot of them. So I can't really justify having like $40 worth of wooden picks. So to sum it all up, a thinner pick is easier to strum with for a beginner because it compensates for that lack of technique. But a thicker pick is going to be easier to pluck individual notes and it gives you more volume control overall. You can get a lot louder with a thicker pick. The size and shape is really up to you. I recommend trying a few just to see what fits the best in your hand and make sure that your finger doesn't rub the strings as well when you're doing it. And finally, the material of the pick. It's gonna affect the durability of it. You know, one's made out of Delrin and nylon. They're gonna last a lot longer than celluloid. The density of the material is gonna affect the tone. The denser it is, the brighter it sounds. So a really soft, airy material like wood sounds very soft and woody literally sounds woody you know whereas a metal pick sounds super bright and metallic plastic picks have a range of density i think delrin is probably the most dense one there's picks with texture you know they have little like nubbins coming out of them and that might help you grip it better maybe you don't have a problem with grip maybe you like the smooth feel of the celluloid pick as it glides through the strings you know that's the feel of it it's totally up to you Either way, I hope this has kind of opened your eyes as to all the variables that there are with picks. You know, there's so many different combinations and that's why it's so hard to figure out what to get. But hopefully now you're a bit more informed and you're a bit more willing to try out some new picks and see what works for you. You know, what's gonna fit your hand the best and suit your style of music the best. And if you find that you need help with more than just choosing a pick, maybe with actually using the pick to play guitar, I do have a complete beginner's course that's designed to take anybody who, you know, you could be absolutely brand new to guitar, or you could be somebody who's tried but struggled with, you know, building up that foundation and getting to the point where you can just strum through a whole song. My course is designed as a foolproof method to make that happen. So I'll put a link down below for that. You can check it out. Otherwise, have fun picking your pick. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> I'll see you later.